This is our review of Gran Turismo Sport. Double-sided, by the way. On paper, we really shouldn't get too excited about this game. But video games don't exist on paper. Racing simulator provided by Next Level Racing and their new 2-in-1 F1 GT cockpit. Whether you like the upright GT seating position or low-slung F1 seating position, the F1 GT has you covered at a price that won't break the bank. Learn more at nextlevelracing.com. I'll admit that we, Billy, who we'll hear from later, and myself, were split on the UI. I really liked the car slash art focus and found navigation, once I knew what was behind each icon, to be very intuitive. Billy also liked the art style, but found navigation annoying. As always, beauty is in the eye of the beholder, but since I'm writing this review, it's a pro. The whole package is just attractive, simple, and relatively snappy. Plus, it's one of the few games that you don't mind stepping away from for a minute because when you come back, you're greeted with beautiful images and cinematic videos upon your return. While I can understand some pushback on the UI, if you think Gran Turismo Sport is anything but beautiful, you are out of your mind. From the most gorgeous intro video you will ever see, to UI, to loading screens, to the race and to the replay, Gran Turismo Sport's graphics and art style are on point. The transition from E3 2016 to E3 2017 to now is impressive. At E3 2016, Gran Turismo Sport was a mess of jagged lines and okay, but not great, textures and shaders. But the released version of Gran Turismo Sport is way more than okay. Thanks to the move to physics-based rendering, the lighting is second to none. The depth of field captured on the flat screen is so good that it's borderline distracting. A number of times I caught myself gawking over the 3D effect of the interior and the tree line off in a distance instead of focusing on the race. The ability for the graphic engine to nearly remove all jagged lines thanks to some sort of motion blur effect versus raw computing power feels like black magic. And we're talking the standard PlayStation 4 here, which is what I have. Not a pro, and not a, obviously, a gaming PC. Speaking of the standard PS4, it pushes out these graphics with not much frames per second drama. I noticed a few times when the game pictures slowed down a bit, but for the most part, both the racing and replay seem to stick around the 60 frames per second level. As for the PlayStation 4 that Billy has, playing on the Pro gives you the option to play on performance or quality modes. Performance tones down the graphics slightly to guarantee that the game runs at 60 frames per second locked, while quality allows you to lose out on some FPS here and there in the pursuit of all that eye candy. The PS4 Pro also allows you to play in 4K with HDR, something we weren't able to experience ourselves, but based on what we've seen out there on the interwebs, it also looks impressive. Now, is it all sunshine and unicorns for the graphics? No. The interior windshield reflections are way too strong and comically bad on some cars. The reflection is so bad on McLaren 650S GT3 that for a bit I thought the vents I was seeing were actually part of the roof design, not just a reflection of the dash below. Many other cars suffer from the same problem, while the rest are just too strong on the reflection front. Leaving the track, the cutscenes that show virtual cars driving around real world roads can be very cringe at times. Some of them are done pretty well, but a lot of them aren't and just look odd. If you want to show the cars driving in beautiful environments, just make the environments. Based on everything else we've seen in the game, they should be plenty good enough. But besides those cons, graphics are a home run and leave us just watching lap after lap captivated. Okay Kaz, you win. I like taking photos in GT Sport. After sitting through multiple E3 presentations that talked extensively about something that I thought I couldn't care less about, I was ready to turn and burn the page on photos. But then I tried it and actually liked it a lot. You can capture some truly stunning photos. Between the graphics engine and the option slash ease of use, taking pictures in GT Sport is a painless, enjoyable experience. Like photo mode, the livery editor is comprehensive and intuitive to use. Between logos and graphics, some truly amazing liveries can be created and already have been during the game's demo. It would be nice to see a way to duplicate your graphics on one side of the car to the other side, and if you race with a wheel, you probably want to whip out the PS4 controller so you can utilize the sticks. But outside of that, the livery editor is another satisfying addition to the game. Perks are in games to keep players going, and this is no exception in GT Sport. Daily Workout pushes you to show up every day and race instead of spending your time trolling the GT Planet forums. Mileage Bonus also rewards you for making laps, allowing you to trade in miles driven 
for things such as cars, helmet liveries, or paint colors. You can also upgrade your cars using miles, the only way to upgrade your cars in GT Sport. It's a small detail, but we do appreciate the game giving you incentive to fire up your PS4 daily and to get out there and drive. The entire premise of Gran Turismo Sport is racing online and it hits it out of the park. The first part of the equation is the unabashed copying of the iRacing driver and safety rating. Do well, move up on the EDCBAS driver rating scale, race clean, gain sportsmanship points, which are applied to your driver rating. The online matchmaking system only places you in the races with people that have the same or close to the same driver rating. In our experience, races may feature two ratings such as A and B or C and D. This results in us competing against other drivers who are actually trying the race hard and clean and not just out there running amok. But even though the new safety rating is nice, it wouldn't be enough without one more element, ghosting. GT Sport will ghost cars that go spinning or even fly into the corner too hard. This element has saved my race and others many times and the game is very good at predicting when ghosting should be applied. The ghosting effect is set higher for races with D and lower rated drivers, decreases in races with A, B, and C drivers, and is actually turned off for the highest rated S drivers. This tiering of the ghosting effect is perfect. Outside of the driver rating, but equally important, is the track limit penalties. If you cut a corner, the game will give you a slowdown penalty. The longer you take to serve the penalty, the more severe it becomes. Don't serve the penalty during the race, then a time penalty will be added post-race. Again, another element that is very well thought out and executed. So while Gran Turismo Sport does a great job of taking care of things once you're inside an online race, what about getting into it? Well, that's really well executed as well. There are three short races that go off every hour. Top of the hour, 20 after, and 40 after, and that allows you to jump from one to another without ever having to take a break from racing. You can also qualify for each race at any time, and once you set a qualifying time, that time is good for the entire week that the track is used. Just make sure you're not in a qualifying session when the race kicks off, or you'll miss it because there's no countdown clock, something I like to see change. But if you do jump into a race session, which opens 15 minutes before the race starts, there is enough time to set some qualifying laps before the race starts. Another thing that is interesting with online racing is the choice of cars. Some races, so far only the N300 group, make you use cars in your garage, as you become accustomed to in the GT series. But other online races skip your garage altogether and just give you a choice of cars from that group to pick from. This new approach leaves us a little split on whether or not this is a good thing, because it takes the game element of earning cars out of the game, but it allows you to drive what you want and creates a very cool and diverse looking feel. The game also applies balance of performance, BOP, to the cars, making it so very different cars can competitively race against one another. It's a little early to declare if the BOP is perfect, but based on the cars that we've driven and raced against, the racing field does feel pretty balanced. And speaking of the field, 24 car fields online is impressive. Not only is it 24 car max, but the fields actually have 22 or 23 people to race against with similar skills to yours thanks to the popularity of Gran Turismo. This is one of the most exciting things about the game. See, in sim racing, you're taking a fairly small user base and trying to get them to go online and go into one race or maybe go into multiple races if you have a bunch of disciplines of cars and you're just making that already kind of smallish group even smaller. Well, in GT Sport, you're going to have this massive user base from around the world and they're all going to be going and jumping into a race or maybe a few races. We'll see how this all goes. And not only does it make sure that you always have a full field of cars, but you're racing against people that are at or around your skill level because they have so many different people to divide up into different races. So this is really exciting and a really big plus for the game. And so far, we've only talked about the sport part of the game. We haven't even touched lobbies. Players can set up or join custom lobbies. The lobbies are easy to set up and allow you to adjust everything you need to create a good experience. Set number of laps, time, what driver rating you have to have, whether to have the race open to everyone or close to friends, class of car, open or fixed setups, BOP, time of day, damage, tire model, fuel usage rate, etc. If the sport races aren't getting it done for you, the lobby should, especially with the new driver rating and ghosting effect keeping things in check. The only downside we see is the max field size of 16 cars, 
which is a bit of a letdown compared to the 24 you have in sport. If there was one thing that Gran Turismo had to do right, it was online racing. And, for the most part, it's doing a really good job. If we have one minor complaint, we're not in love with the running of the same track for an entire week. The GT Sport demo only ran at the same track for 24 hours, and the changeover of tracks during the week was fun. But for the final game, the track only changes out every Tuesday, which can leave you running on tracks you don't care for for an entire week which could very well lead to people just taking the week off. So in the name of getting folks to show up every single day, we think that the 24 hour route would be the better way to go. Outside of that change, we are excited to see where the online sport play goes. We can already see the FIA GT Nations Cup, GT Manufacturer Series, and Polyphony Digital Championship scheduled for November, and it will be interesting to see what else gets scheduled. Could we see other, longer, open races? Will multiple races run at the same time? Will they have special one-off races? Time will tell, but there's a lot of cool things that can be done from here thanks to the system. The biggest casualty of the online-focused GT Sport is campaign. Driving school, mission challenge, and circuit experience aren't bad, but they aren't the most compelling. To some degree, driving school and mission challenge is the mixed bag it's always been in the GT series. Some events are painfully easy and boring. Others are really challenging and take multiple attempts just to pass. At the very least, Campaign is still a good way to pick up bonus cars, and of course, gain miles and credits. Gran Turismo Sport isn't the GT, insert whatever number applies to you, of your childhood. Campaign is a shadow of itself, and while it has some compelling moments, it isn't the staple that it once was, which will be a major turnoff to a lot of people out there, but won't be an issue to those who just want to go and race online. The car list in GT Sport is also going to be polarizing. With 162 cars, a fraction of the over 1,000 cars in Grand Turismo 6, it is a significant reduction. But I would argue it's a good thing. 162 cars is still a lot of cars, and do we really need 35 different R32 Skylines? How do you put the same amount of time and effort into 1,000 cars, 600 cars, even 300 cars? You don't. I'd ra I rather see less cars, but more time and effort put into each one than a bunch of cars with some of them done well and a bunch of others that aren't done well. Now, with that said, I do sympathize with people out there who like these games for the car collecting aspect because that aspect is now gone in Gran Turismo Sport. As for the cars that are in the game, I like what I see and I am impressed by a lot of the fantasy race cars. I usually don't like fantasy cars, but the group three and four fantasy cars look like they could be the real thing and make for very interesting looking online fields. Unfortunately, there are a lot of Vision GT cars that muddy up the water in the prototype group thanks to them looking woefully out of place compared to the sweet real-life LMP1 cars. I would love to see them separated from the real-life prototypes and put into their own group. The AI in GT Sports arcade mode isn't bad, but isn't great, which, considering the amount of bad AI in racing games today, really isn't a slant against them. They don't race you super hard, but if you make a mistake, they will pounce and they don't do anything real stupid like create giant, realism-breaking pileups. AI comes in three speeds, beginner, intermediate, and professional, which is quickly becoming a dated way to set up AI. It would have been nice to see a 1 to 10 slider, or even a 70 to 115 slider, to give you more speeds to race against. We say this because in the short professional races, the AI isn't that hard. Oddly though, they do become more challenging in longer races, so the game might be adjusting their speed depending on the length of race, even with the same AI settings. Either way, more options for AI speed would be nice, but at least they aren't out there ruining your race. Unlike past GT games, all the cars in GT Sport have interior views, and there are pros and cons. On the plus side, the interiors are nicely done, except for those windshield reflections, and you can move the seat up, down, and forward and back. Unfortunately, you can only do this by pausing while in car and changing the view and advanced options. It'd be nice to see Polyphony add button mapping support, so we could make this key adjustment on the fly. Something else of note inside the car is the heads-up display. Besides the low-quality looking track outline, the heads-up display looks pretty nice. The issue is, like AI, it's very restrictive on options. The heads-up display comes in three different flavors, off, race info only, and display all. Race Info Only tells you very little, while Display All fills your screen with more stuff than you really need. I don't want the track outline. I don't want the super annoying suggested gear that flashes red every corner. As Kimmy would say, leave me alone, I know what I'm doing. 
That was a really bad Kimmy impersonation. For the most part, I don't want any of the info about the car at the bottom center of the screen. I want the race information and the options in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. And speaking of those options, which includes helpful things like sector times, ABS, traction control, fuel maps, it also contains radar. While I'm glad there's something to help let me know where the cars are at around me, especially in cars without rear cameras since the mirrors are usually outside the field of view, I can't help but to think there's a better way. In the middle of an intense race, it's hard to look down towards the radar and take my eyes off the track. A system like a lot of other games use with arrows on the entire screen would be much more helpful. The tracks in GT Sport are well done. The real world tracks feel and look faithful to the real world counterparts, and there are some really fun fantasy tracks that not only steal corners and sections from real world tracks, but feel like they could actually be real world tracks. The tracks also have a good atmosphere to them, between the fantastic looking pit road and people models, to the gorgeous skies and lighting. But there's a but. There aren't enough tracks. There are 17 locations and 40 variants, but once you start digging into those locations and variants, you see that the picture is a lot less rosy. 11 of those variants are the reverse version, a lazy tactic that doesn't really work on a number of tracks. Three locations, six variants, are off-road, which means 13 locations for asphalt and only three for off-road. Of those 13 locations, two are ovals, which have always been an awkward waste of space in the GT series and continue the tradition here. This brings us to 11 locations, with only six of them being from the real world. Keep in mind, we're at a time now where other racing games have some of the best racetracks from around the world. Fantasy tracks are all fine and dandy and okay to have, but you have to have at least 15 real world racing tracks to offset those fantasy tracks, and if you don't, you're behind. Also, something that's, you know, got to keep thinking is the online mode. Will going to the same tracks and locations over and over again make people frustrated and turn them off from the game? Only time will tell. Time will also only tell what Polyphony's plan is for future tracks and possible DLC. They now have the exclusive license to Pike's Peak, so we assume we'll be seeing that in the future. Outside of that, is anyone's guess. GT Sport lets you choose between 6 and 8 times of day depending on location with fixed weather conditions for each time slot. The options are nice, but weather conditions being tied to the time of day and no real time progression makes it a middling experience, so that's how we score it. Yay! GT Sport has damage! Sort of. While it's nice to finally see damage in a GT game, it's a mixed bag of both visual and mechanical execution. Visually, the cars will scratch, break headlamps, and show minor dents, but you can't really deform and break them apart. Mechanically, if you do ram into someone or something hard, you can cause damage to your car and it won't hit top speed. But whether or not you receive mechanical damage seemed a bit inconsistent, allowing me to get away with hard contact at times, but not all the time. So while it's good to see some consequences for your ramming ways, especially when playing offline against AI that don't ghost, there's still a lot more to be desired. But hey, 20 years in, and finally something. We're not driving a vacuum anymore! The car sounds are much improved over Gran Turismo 6, but that doesn't mean they're class leading. The engine notes are much more believable and less electronic or vacuum-like, but they do have an odd mix to them that makes it tough to tell what exactly the car is doing. Is it time to shift? Are the tires about to break loose as you put power down? It's hard to tell. The tire sound is also odd in that the onset of the, still kind of annoying, tire squeal doesn't mean the car is about to spin, just that you're driving it hard, but you can still go harder. This makes finding the limit tougher and different from pretty much every other racing game out there. On the very positive side, the chassis flex as you go over curbs sounds great, and we are suckers for the classic GT menu sounds and awesome music. We had a lot of discussion about how to categorize physics. The physics in GT Sport are much improved, and if we are judging the game from a Simcade angle, we would probably put it in the pro category. But judging it against all the other racing games that are out there, including others that you can get on the PlayStation 4, the physics fall into our neutral category. On the positive side, the cars feel very good up to the edge. Dry them at 90% and the cars behave in a believable fashion based off their weight, center of gravity, power, and tire choice. But once you start really hustling the cars, as you do when you, you know, race, the physics shortcomings start to creep in. The all-important tire flex that has become a hallmark of our discussion these days really isn't present. 
This leaves you with an on-top-of-the-track feel and no way to tell that the car is building up to brake traction. It just does. And once it does, you're all hands and elbows trying to save it. A similar phenomenon also happens with braking. I found it really hard to find the limit between not enough brake and locking up the tires. All of this equaled up to a change of how you drive. You really can't push these cars in GT Sport, even higher performing cars like the GT3s and prototypes. You have to be smooth with your braking and throttle, and you have to really hit your marks to put as little steering angle into the car as possible. And if we're being honest, these driving techniques are hallmarks of any good driver, but they are highlighted in GT Sport to the nth degree. It just doesn't allow you to take a high performance car by the scruff of the neck and drive the hell out of it. You also have to adjust your usual car settings. While usually we wouldn't run traction control, turning it off is a death sentence in a lot of cars. The default setting of 3 isn't bad, but we found 2 to be the best in most cars. Once you do make these changes to your settings and driving style, you can enjoy the racing and be quick in GT Sport, but it is an adjustment, especially for those of us who drive other racing games. Like physics, force feedback falls into a middle area as well. While it can be surprisingly strong, it's not the most detailed. Under advanced settings and driving options, the game gives you three sliders to adjust. Controller steering sensitivity, force feedback max torque, and force feedback sensitivity. Controller setting sensitivity is for wireless controllers, so we'll skip that and talk about force feedback settings. Force feedback max torque is how much resistance do you want the wheel to have. Turning it up gives you strength, but sacrifices detail. Going down has the opposite effect. For me, driving the new Thrustmaster TGT, the official wheel of GT Sport, I found the middle ground setting of 5 to be the best. Below 5, the force feedback was lighter than I cared for and didn't really give me much more detail. Above 5, the wheel would get surprisingly heavy, but lose a lot of detail. So like most things in life, sticking in the middle was the best way to go. Speaking of the TGT, the wheel was clearly developed for GT Sport with all the buttons needed, including sticks that makes things like painting liveries easier. It also exhibits this low vibration that correlates with what's happening on screen in GT Sport. The low rumble makes my entire next level racing F1 GT simulator lightly vibrate and acts like a transducer using Sim Experience Sim Vibe on the PC. It's pretty wild, but we'll talk more about that later in our review of the wheel. Back to force feedback. Force feedback is part of the three-sided triangle that has you driving GT Sport more with your eyes than with your hands. Between sounds that aren't very descriptive, physics that make you feel on top of the track, and force feedback that isn't giving your hands the entire story, you're left depending on your eyes for where to brake, how much to brake, where to turn, and where to get back on the gas. It's more memory than reaction, which doesn't ruin the game, but doesn't elevate it either. The only con we have, and one many of you experienced during the demo, is GT Sport always being online. While Polyphony claimed this was great, and when it works, it's not an issue at all, the issue becomes when it doesn't work. See, if the game wasn't always online, you could go and race and progress it, and it would save locally to the PlayStation 4, and then when you were online, it would update all your information, get all your different stats and all that good stuff. But unfortunately, when it is always online play, this doesn't happen. Any progress you make isn't saved. And then worst of all, the only progress you can make is in arcade mode. You can't do anything else in the game when you're not connected to the server. So if there are major server issues, which are more likely to happen at a launch of a game when everyone's trying to jump on, then you're not gonna get much of an experience out of GT Sport. You're gonna go and race against some AI in arcade mode, and that's about it. So we're not a huge fan of this always online mode. Let's now get to our final thoughts on Gran Turismo Sport. And first up is Billy. You know, John and I had talked extensively about GT Sport in preparation for this review. So I'm not going to retread a lot of what we've already said. Those are my thoughts as well. What I do want to say is in context to the GT series as a whole, I started when GT came out on the PlayStation 1, and I've played every iteration of Gran Turismo since. So, my favorites were 2 and 3. Uh, 4 is where I kind of started to feel like it was going on a path that I didn't care for. 5 was probably my low point in the series. Uh, 6 was a little better, but it didn't make a big enough shift for me to really change my thoughts. So 5 and 6 were really not my favorites. This is not going to appeal to the traditionalist of Gran Turismo fans. In other words, if you liked that 
single player journey through a career that meant you was a car collectathon and you could upgrade cars and you kind of got an attachment to some of those cars that you played which is what I did this is not that game so that really needs to be understood when approaching GT Sport trying to not let my nostalgia affect my ability to look at this objectively GT Sport is a complete shift from the numbered series. I don't know that we're ever going to go back to the numbered series as well. I think this is what you're going to see from this point forward, especially if this is successful. That being said, this is probably one of the most enjoyable and easiest online experiences I have ever had. The way GT Sport kind of pushed me in the right direction for multiplayer uh, made me feel like you know, if I made a mistake, I wasn't going to crash somebody out ridiculously because the ghosting system works quite well at the lower levels and it decreases as you get higher up. The interesting thing is I felt like I could race more and I had really fun and engaging races starting out. The presentation of GT Sport is second to none. The UI elements I'm not crazy about, uh, but it's not that big of a deal. What really stands out is how amazing it looks, except for the reflections. GT uh, Gran Turismo has always had a problem with reflections, and this is no exception. They look dreadful, which is such a stark contrast from the rest of the game, because the rest of the game looks amazing. And besides the street circuits, there is a really nice atmosphere going along with the road course section of the game. Street circuits always have looked stale. Uh, in Gran Turismo and this is no exception quite honestly they could have gotten rid of these because there really is no reason for them and the lack of tracks really uh, hurts GT Sport as a whole the lack of field of view adjustments is a bummer uh, along with no throttle and brake sensitivity adjustments as well so you kinda have to play with ABS and traction control to get your settings adjusted accordingly circling back around to the biggest positive of GT Sport is it really does curate that online experience quite well. In fact, it's probably the best example next to iRacing. And in some aspects, I would venture to say that this actually surpasses iRating in the ease of use and getting a new driver acquainted and accustomed to what they're going to experience just for really that ghosting factor. They, they can go into a race even practicing. And as a race car driver, you know that practice doesn't equal racing. It can get you prepared, but there's no substitute for racing with another opponent because your lines change and the way you move around and pass somebody. That all changes how you enter and exit corners and, uh, and affects your speed. So I think that the ghosting aspect that it does really lets a driver not worry too much about being a beginner going in and going, ah, oh, I'm not going to wipe somebody out because I blew a corner uh, because of something I wasn't prepared for or what have you. I think that is probably the best way to put somebody into the mix. So uh, by far, this is probably the most positive. In fact, it is the most positive online experience I've had so far. And not having a ton of cards really doesn't bother me either. It just makes it so things aren't so spread out some of the fantasy cars where they're real cars but maybe they weren't group four or group three gives a nice look to the field it gives options for everybody to pick their favorite car rather than the fastest car with the balance of performance adjustments that it does i just think that as a multiplayer this is probably the best one physics are fine until you get over that limit then it doesn't feel right you might as well toss the dirt racing stuff out the window. I don't care for that either. That does not feel like any sort of dirt tire I've ever experienced in real life racing. Just feels like ice. There's no real reason to have it. But the asphalt stuff, the tarmac stuff is pretty good until it breaks traction. And you kind of have to understand what Gran Turismo is actually giving you to understand where the limit of the tires are. So there's some adjustment period, and that's not unlike bouncing from sim to sim. Each sim has its own idea of what realistic is, and I think that's kind of a funny term to use now, because 
it's all a mathematical equation. You're you're using a set of parameters to say this is what it should be doing, and I'm gonna tell you this right now. No physics engine and no tire model is perfect. There's always deficiencies. So in closing, we just have to take GT Sport for what it is. It's a great drive, fun multiplayer system. Uh, campaign is all right. It has some fun elements in there, but it just doesn't have what we used to have as far as the collectathon and car part swapping and that kind of thing. And I'm a little sad about that, but being objective, this is still a really good title as long as you're not longing for that classic feel of Gran Turismo. At the top, I stated that on paper, GT Sport wasn't much to really get excited about. And that was based on the fact that when we got done compiling this review, we had way more neutral attributes than positive attributes for the game. But as we've discovered recently on other reviews that we've done, it only takes getting one or two things right to really put a game over the top and make it a good game, as long as you don't have any really bad cons that kind of, you know, knock all those pros out. And this is what we have with GT Sport. The multiplayer is so well done and it impressed me so much. And I mean, this is a game that I didn't really have high expectations for going into it. I'd driven it at the past two E3s and you know, I wasn't really impressed with the graphics. They didn't look that great. Um, you know, the, the driving physics were just kind of like, this is okay. But when I thought back on those experiences, I was like, you know what? Even in 2016, I did have some really good multiplayer races, and the same could be said about 2017. And now here we are with the release version of the game, and now the graphics have been amazingly polished and look fantastic. And obviously there's some work on driving stuff like that, but, you know, we have things like Racing Online, the ghosting effect, which would have helped me also at E3 in the past. And here we are with a game that is just, it's really addictive. It has me coming back and wanting to race more and more, you know, based on how strong the multiplayer is. Now, are there areas that GT Sport could improve? Of course. I mean, we've noted a whole bunch here. A tire model with sidewall flex, force feedback that transfers more of the road surface detail to you, more informative sounds, more real world tracks, more AI difficulty options, more HUD options, and a lot more. The wish list isn't short, but even with that wish list, the pickup and playability of Gran Turismo Sport Online is really second to none, and I'm really excited to see where they take this game in the future now that they have this excellent online foundation set. So that will do it for our review of Gran Turismo Sport. We hope you guys enjoyed this review. If you did, please give it a like. Subscribe to our channel if you haven't. Check out our website, isrtv.com, for latest news, reviews, and positive forums. And also the written version of the review will be there. As you see, these reviews take a lot of time, so please support us. One way you can support us is checking out our Amazon affiliate link in the description below. Click on the link, shop through Amazon. It doesn't cost you a thing. So again, thank you for watching Inside Sim Racing. I'm John Sable. Please take care of you and yours.